So we can build our audiences on social media, but I've had so many clients who then have a problem with their social media. Their Facebook page, page gets shut down or their Instagram page gets hacked and all their 10,000 followers, you know, evaporate into thin air. So we have to make sure that we are inviting good leads, you know, quality leads onto our email list, basically, because there's one thing that you can be sure of is that you own your email list. Are you looking to level up your business and or simply crack the code on how to shift from self-employed to CEO of your business? Wherever you are in your entrepreneurial journey, it's never too early or late to scale, level up and shift up. Hi, I'm Kelly McNichol, host of the Shift Podcast. I'm a business coach, consultant, online educator, brand strategist, and marketing expert. And I'm genuinely so glad you are here. On the Shift Podcast, we will share the real talk behind what CEOs need to know and take action on to grow, scale, be and remain relevant and successful, and to help others of you shift from that self-employed grind to leaning into and holding that position as the CEO of your company. So let's dig in and start taking massive action. Hey, 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 everybody. And thank you for joining for another episode of The Shift with myself, your host, Kelly McNichol. Today's episode, our guest is Gail Starr. Gail Starr is an experienced um, entrepreneur, more than 20 years as an entrepreneur. And as somebody who is really an outdoorsy person and, and uh, her businesses were all centered around uh, outdoors and being active. Um, certainly her moving into a tech field seemed completely out of character and probably a lot of people questioned it. And in fact, what got her into this was she actually purchased her very first online ever purchase was this um, Kajabi course and specifically on funnels. And so, you know, this is a, an episode full of fantastic information about building funnels, simple funnels, right? They don't have to be complicated. Of course, while she specializes in Kajabi and she is certified in Kajabi, she is also very fluent and capable in many other platforms. But this is also about um, saying, you know, we can shift at any time, right? Make the shift into the online space the way that she did, that you can in fact teach an old dog like ourselves um, new tricks. So this is about demystifying kind of that tech has to be complicated and that it's maybe for the younger people who've grown up um, with a lot more tech than we have. Um, but certainly it's very possible. And so I'm always talking about efficiency. I like things to be simple and, um, and cost effective, right? But also they have to make an impact. Otherwise, what's the point in doing them? So today's episode with Gail as my guest, we are just going to dig into a little bit about that story, really talk a lot about uh, funnels, how simple they can be, how low tech um, you know, the process is. One of the other inspiring things about Gail, um, more and more, I am connecting with business women in particular um, who are in South Africa. And so while Gail does work in um, like internationally, her clients are in different countries, certainly the US, uh, Canada and elsewhere, her other driving passion, which is truly what I love. So we are all here to make an impact and we are passion driven. We are purpose driven. And she is also trying to foster like a lot of the business women that I am meeting through South Africa. The inspiring piece is that they are there to try to share. So there's a program that she's also running uh, collaboratively with another South African businesswoman. Um, to just bring the tech world, show them that the universe is bigger than what they know it to be. Because of course, uh, power technology, everything has its challenges, especially in a place like South Africa. 
but she wants truly to let them know that there's a whole big world out there that they can also tap into. So not only is she very knowledgeable, um, she is also very inspiring. And so I really hope that you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoy speaking to Gail every single time that we do. And so how you and I connected was I was specifically um, looking at, and there's actually a whole series of these podcasts that I'm doing that are really centered around um, lead generation, where and when people are buying and selling, because everybody thought, and maybe lots of people still think the answer is just posting a whole lot online and getting a lot of followers, but it's not actually what drives the sales. Like when they go to sell, they're, they're coming offline from that. And so that can be held in places like a Kajabi portal thing. It can be held in all kinds of places. Um, and then, so knowing that that's where they buy, right? So I'm always talking about being influential or you know, and not trying to be an influencer. I want people to understand in their business, if they've been struggling, it's not your fault because you're just you're looking for things to turn around or become something in an area they're not meant for, right? So I love social media. I love to be social and connect with people and connect others, but it's not actually where the sales generally happen. You'll get some stuff from there, but that's a very inconsistent location. So we have to look at the outside pieces of meeting them when and where they're ready to buy. And then also bringing them into basically under our umbrella, under our roof. And so if we're doing it right, we're deaf, we're, getting those email addresses as well. So even if they're not ready to buy from us right now, or maybe they never are, it is part of that network. And if you show up and you um, nurture those audiences um, as well, pay just as much attention to them, maybe they're not necessarily your client, but they know people who are. So the list building piece is an asset that we should be constantly building. And so your expertise in this area, I mean, you do, I didn't realize you could do funnels and stuff through Kajabi, right? Absolutely. Yes. I thought it was really just a place that to hold your courses. And I understood that there's a marketing piece to it, but again, not being really the tech, I can't say I'm not tech savvy. I could figure it out if I want to. It's just literally not where I want to spend my time. Absolutely. It's not where your interests lie. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that's why a lot of people, um, do should reach out and get help. It doesn't make you not an expert in your field just because you don't like to build your own funnels or even build your own courses, right? And so I just was like, I knew there was a marketing piece to it, but you know a lot more about it. And of course, the same thing can happen in many other platforms. We're talking specifically about Kajabi, but I think for the purposes of this show and what I want everybody to know is that it is, we can do this in many other different kinds of platforms mm. or not even on a platform. You can kind of piecemeal some things together. Like if you bought your web domain from somewhere, if I pick GoDaddy, for instance, I can actually create a landing page in there and do stuff from there. I have to connect to other things. The, the pluses to a platform like Kajabi is it can hold a lot of the pieces. So you're not um, trying to connect many different pieces of technology mm. together. So there's a convenience factor to it, but of course, price wise, it's not necessarily the least expensive either. So I want to be able to have people understand you don't have to do it in this way and in this platform, but the concept and how we do it is, is definitely applicable and we can do it in many different ways. So why don't you tell me a bit more like beyond, so a lot of people I think think of Kajabi as a place where we hold our courses. I want you to talk about specifically kind of like this landing page lead generation funnel type aspect of it, because funnels don't necessarily have to be these 30 page long things, you know, not, I not, not at all. Yeah. yeah. And I find personally for my, for my audience, when they're ready to buy, um, I, they're a lot like me. If I get to a page and I've got to run through 30 pages of it to like actually click the buy I've left. Like I'll still scroll through just out of curiosity to see how long it is. But like the minute I have to scroll more than like a few pages, I'm, I'm done. Right. So <laughs> I'm like, that's great. And it's too bad. That's, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> and I know a lot of my audience and clients feel the same way, or also it feels stressful to think that you have to create a 30 page funnel. Right. Absolutely. So tell me about like lead generators that you would create kind of landing pages, funnels, 
and kind of the expertise you give to that and maybe some of sharing some of the benefits of it results sure. you've seen? Sure. So as you were saying, so often we, when we talk about audience building, we think that we have to, you know, build audiences on, on our social media platforms. And definitely that is a, a place to start. So our social media platforms or places like YouTube or your podcast, you know, where people are going to first encounter you and they're going to listen to what you have to say. A lot of people will be sort of just in the background, not actually engaging with you to start off with. And then slowly as you begin to resonate with them, they might start liking or commenting or something like that. So we can build our audiences on social media, but I've had so many clients who then have a problem with their social media. Their Facebook page, page gets shut down or their Instagram page gets hacked and all their 10,000 followers, you know, evaporate into thin air. So we have to make sure that we are inviting um, good leads, you know, quality leads into our onto our email list, basically, because there's one thing that you can be sure of is that you own your email list. So it's very, very important to not only be building your audiences on your social media, but to be bringing them into your, your uh, email list. And so we do that via funnels. Now, a lot of my clients say to me, but Gail, I just don't even understand this concept of a funnel. They're like, it's just so complicated. And how I like to explain it to them is, the funnel is literally, so the top of the funnel is where you invite people with something, whether it be free or paid, you invite people to work further with you. And the exchange of that is basically their email address. So for instance, the most simplest funnel that we will build, but it's one of the most powerful because you can build it right at the start of a build. I always say if I'm building somebody's website or business onto Kajabi, I always say to them, let's start with this first funnel and we will then build from there because it takes a while to build your audience and it takes a while to build your email list. So while we're building, you know, a build could take six weeks or it could take eight weeks, depending on when people are ready to launch. So while we're doing that, let's start inviting people onto your list. So we normally do what we call a freebie funnel because it's normally the thing that people can get up in and ready uh, quickly or, or first. So your freebie offer can be something like a PDF, a checklist, a um, how-to guide, a ebook. So anything that is, I always say to my clients, their freebie should actually be so valuable that the person downloading it goes, wow, if this was free, imagine what the paid offers are going to be, you know? So don't just throw something together, but really make sure that this freebie gives your client a great first win, maybe the first step towards the transformation they're looking for or a how-to overall guide so that people have got a kind of roadmap. So the freebie, basically you invite people in and that is done on a landing page. People always also ask me, what's the difference between a web page and a landing page? So a landing page for a a funnel would basically just be the place where the person comes to find out a little bit more about the freebie and to give us their name and an address, email address. Now on Kajabi, we can then automate the whole process because we would then link up once they send us their email address, Kajabi will immediately send them an email that has the PDF or the guide or a link to the video, whatever their freebie is, so the person can consume it straight away. But you get all sorts of systems. You could have something as simple as a MailChimp landing page that does the exact same thing. Then you don't need the whole Kajabi setup. Um, my very first offer that I ever sold was sold on a Google Doc. So I got people's email addresses. They were part of my Swimming Teachers Association. We did a webinar. They gave me their email addresses on the chat and they purchased the pack. 
and I gave them the link to the Google Doc. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to do it, but you just have to think of a funnel as inviting people to work further with you and then you giving them something in return. So a paid for, initially we do, we, we initially you want to have a lower cost because people don't know you very well yet. So it could be a mini workshop, a mini course around the sort of $27 or it could be free. So with a freebie, you're building your audience quicker. With a, a, a paid for offer, you, you're building your audience slower, but maybe the, the leads are warmer. People have actually taken out you know, their wallets to say, yes, we'd like to work with you. And what I've found is that that is always the first funnel that I build. But what I've found is that people grow their email lists by putting out offers. So, you know, by launching a webinar launch or a challenge um, as they build their businesses, launches actually build your email list. So Meg, who is my mentor, she will tell you that often she will have people go through two or three launches with her before they actually purchase. So you just because somebody doesn't purchase straight away off a launch doesn't mean that they're not going to, but you just need to keep them on your list. You need to keep them updated. You need to nurture them. And yeah, that's, that's really the best way to, to build your lists. You know, um, I always tell everybody, um, you get to define your market. Don't let the market define you. And so whenever people kind of aren't sure what I'm talking about, because, you know, I can give examples of businesses I've run that the markets didn't exist before. Uh, you're kind of doing that in the space where you're out in, in South Africa, where not a lot of people do online stuff. But I always give the example of, of funnels itself, and because everybody thinks that funnels is this digital product. And that's just because Russell Brunson made it that, right? Like, it. it is mm. a digital product, but really a funnel is the framework for sales, the same framework that's always been in place. And... I, you know, if you think about what niche is and everybody get niche overwhelmed thinking, oh my goodness, I've got to pin down just this one little thing that I do, but I, everybody was feeling, but I'm multi-passionate and you're like, no, you're kind of not really. It's like, what's the umbrella? What's the main thing people are searching for? And so probably a lot of the same search or keywords that people would use to find, say somebody like yourself, they would find me. Right. So maybe it's like mm -hmm. help with generating leads, right? So lead generation, that's the top end of your funnel essentially, right? That's your and I, I always describe it like a house, you know, think about your kind of the top end of your funnel, your niche, whatever it is we want to call it. Cause I think every piece of your business, your website, all those things are either mini funnels on their own, or they're a portion of it leading to the next thing. So I say, it's like the, the front, like, it's like your house. So think about your top end of your funnel as the front door, you know? what does it look like? Like what's appealing to your audience? Is it going to be the color of the door? Is it going to, does it have a, a welcome mat? Are there plants outside? And the idea is to make them sit there and go, okay, I like the way that looks and feels. Let me pop my head in this door and look a little further. And so to pop their head in the door, that's the, the lead generation piece. They come in, they look, you know, and if they like it, ideally they come into like, say you're, whatever your foyer, whatever it is, that's beyond that front door. And that's ideally when you're, you know, they're coming in for the offer, you get their email address, they come into your circle. And from that point with your email list, with the content you put out on your site or into your social media, hopefully this is getting them to want to learn more and more about you. And ideally by the end of it, they're coming and they want to take part in every room in this house that you've built. And so that's always what I'm thinking of it as it's like this welcome kind of mat or, or door for people to come in, what does that look like to them? You know, were they looking for, you know, and just because everybody's looking for a red door, doesn't mean you can't put out, you know, a green one, but what's, what's going to make the green door appealing? You know, how are you going to define your market? You're going to put these plants, these things that people didn't think of. And that's where that nurture sequence thing comes into is mm. like, as they come in, it's, you, they are saying, okay, I do want to learn a bit more. So what do you do after that? Do you just invite them in and hope that they, now they're your client? No, 
they need to know a bit more, right? So <laughs> that first introduction should be something, um, like you said, that's a value that gives them kind of their first win. And then from there, ideally, you're still speaking to them. They're like, yeah, they get me. They understand what I'm looking for. Or, you know, I've already tried this other thing, but their take on it is different. And so I want to go and explore further with that person. And like you said, that email list is golden. We own that. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day and she said, I think she does email list building. And she said she did it out of necessity because she'd created a business that she would market online on Facebook and the way it was set up then, right? So it's not even about getting kicked off Facebook or the algorithms per se. What they did was they changed how you could um, define your audience that it shared to. And so she had this really dialed in ideal audience that were constantly buying. And then they changed the parameters on how you can pick your audience. And that completely just killed yeah. her business instantly. And she struggled to get it back. And she realized, man, I'm at the mercy of Facebook here, right? A hundred percent. So the lead generation piece, um, and I like that you start with that little, with that kind of first simple quick funnel, because I think that that makes a lot of sense. And then Kelly, also what we, what I tell my clients as well is, you know, so often the first people who come into your, into your world, you know, we've got the five stages of awareness of your client's journey. Some of them are, are just literally, they know that there's a problem. They know that they want to get to a certain point, but they actually don't know how to get there yet. They don't know their options. They haven't actually started looking for solutions. So we can, so often the people who come in initially are the completely unaware buyers. And then as you take them through your nurture sequences, you then you start introducing, you know, different things, the features, maybe for, for myself with Kajabi, my first lead magnet is the 10 things you didn't know that you didn't know about Kajabi. And then my nurture sequences will then start telling them all about the time saving parts, you know, why they should be setting up their settings. So many people don't set up their settings right at the beginning and it causes them so much problems. So we take them on a journey through until they are aware enough to say, right, actually these next offers make sense to me now. So and then you can also build different funnels for different stages of the awareness journey. So funnels yes. are- Yes, so great. I'm going to ask you about those five stages in um, a second. But, you know, what you were talking about, I always tell people, it's like, we're building this bridge that they didn't know they needed, yes. right? So what okay. is it that our audience needs to learn and know to understand that that they, you know, need our, our services, our product, or whatever? What is it that they don't know? And Absolutely. so it's not just about like connecting with them. So they like on a language piece where they feel like, you know, you're speaking the right, the same, the right language, because there's so many people doing similar things, but my spin on it and my delivery of it and the journey that I'll take you as we go to it is going to be very different than somebody else. Right. <laughs> so yeah. that's where that nurture piece is, is what is it that they don't know that they need to know? And that's, those are these little bridges. So every interaction you have with them is just kind of highlighting these things that maybe they hadn't thought about, or they did, but they hear it so much. But then the minute you say it, they're like, oh my goodness, they get me. This is the person that I'm resonating with, right? So you specifically said the five stages. Can you list out hmm. five stages? I, so I know, so, spot. <laughs> we have our so we have our first stage, which is our unaware. So so I've heard examples of this being told where I thought it was quite clever. So you have somebody who has a headache. And so they know that they've got a problem. So, but they, they're not really sure what's causing it or what it is. So then they, they're looking around, they're kind of unaware of solutions and, and where they can go for the headache. Then they go to the stage where the headache has got so bad that actually they're now looking actively for a solution. And you'll go and you'll maybe look at online or you might ask the, the sister at the clinic. So they're starting to become aware of their problem, but they're not sure yet what the solution is or any products that can help them. 
then so the the clinic system might say well have you had enough water to drink or the somebody might say well you're getting headache maybe because your eyes you have you had your eyes tested so they start to see that there are different solutions available to them so then they become aware of the of the problem and they start searching for the solution and then from there their history kind of relates back to to what they've tried already so maybe they're going to go you know what I've actually I've had my eyes tested so I know it's not that um I've I have had enough water so maybe it's just that I've had a really stressful day and I need a headache tablet or something like that so they go through those uh, stages if I can remember we've got the unaware we've got the problem aware We've got the solution aware. The last two is where they actually search. And then the fifth one is where they actually buy. I can't remember the names of the last two. But they go from unaware, problem aware, solution unaware, solution aware, and then on to the purchasing. So they go through a whole, they go through the five stages of discovery, basically, on how to get from where they are, the pain that they're in to where they want to be. Um, so let me ask you, when so when you're doing these funnels and whatnot, and you're doing it through Kajabi and you're setting it up, how do you get those landing pages out to your potential audience? What's the what's the methods that you use to do that? Is it sharing it through social media? Is it Okay, so I this year has been my year to expand and scale my business. And so for me at the moment, my um, roadmap is to do it through collaboration and through connecting with other people. So although I do, I've got my links on my social medias, um, you know, we we are in a community, our heart-centered apprentices, who also amongst us, we share each other's businesses with each other's client bases. So we're almost piggy banking of people within our community who so so within our community, although we are all Kajabi service providers, there are ladies who are social media specialists and branding specialists. So everybody kind of has their own speciality. So we do a lot of collaboration within our community to grow. And then, um, as I said, this year, I've decided that I need to grow my, my list. So I'm in the process of doing this this year. And so it is through collaboration. So I've done a training into Meg's group. And from that training, I've been asked to do another training into another ladies group. I've joined two summits. So I've been accepted as a speaker on two summits. And I have um, I've built some assets for two bundles. So through the summits and the bundles as well, we will be reaching a wider audience of people that are not on my list. You know, so you have a you have a, a summit with sort of 20 speakers and we all will be sharing on each other's um, audiences. So it's the first time I'm doing it. My list building has always been based on either my freebies or my paid for offers. Um, and, you know, it's it's kind of, I take every opportunity that I can. If I've got, if I'm in some groups that allow um, promotion of, of things, I will always take up that opportunity. So I've got some groups who the admins will just be like, okay, guys, it's time to promote your, yourself. I will always take them up on that opportunity. In things like the Kajabi Facebook group, we've got a help wanted, there's a help wanted thread. And I'll go in there three or four times a month and I will add my new offers. So it's just literally, you know what you were saying earlier about being consistent and showing up and not giving up. And initially it's slow because initially people don't know you that well. But once you start getting a bit of momentum, it just seems to snowball from there. So since, since the beginning of the year, I've been on two podcasts 
I've been approached from somebody who recommended me to be um to put an article onto an online entrepreneur website. I've got my summits coming up, so I've trained in Meg's group and I've been asked to train in another group. And and from that training as well, I've had people saying, you know, my clients are now starting to get into this. So could we promote it? So yeah, I think you just have to take the opportunities when they come. And don't feel despondent if things are going slowly, because they will initially. But everybody started somewhere. So, and you know, now you look at people who've got four or five thousand people on their lists and they get traction and they they they're doing what I want to be doing. So yeah. Yeah, and I think it's so important that you share that piece about, you know, that it it it's I think people um, you know, have come to think at some point in their in their business, especially I think in the beginning of their journey, is that there's some sort of magic wand, you know, like if you create a post and it goes viral, then all of a sudden you're this, you know, eight figure earner overnight. And it's just, it's, it's not like, like, like not in not. any business. Um, you have to put in this work and this time and this consistency. Um, and so that's where I feel like that social media piece is important because even if some, I come across some of these like most fantastic offer, like through, I Google search it, whatever, I'm going to go and see what else they have out there. Like, do have they been on Facebook for more than a minute? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what is the 100%. kind of stuff that they're sharing in their social media? Uh, do they have a website or not? Like, and not that any one of those particular things matter. I just like to look at, at the totality of it all. Right. But yeah. I think people just kind of get sold on this idea. Like, oh, you can just start a business from scratch and just take this one program and you're going to be you know, earning six figures a month before, you know, and I was like, I just don't, you know, I just wish that people, <laughs> people gave themselves a little more grace, um, to understand if you're truly trying to build a legacy and a business, mm -hmm. it's going to take some time. But of course, that's why getting help from people who kind of already know a system and a thing to do, who've already been there, done that and can help you have some shortcuts in places, right? We Absolutely. can't have a you know, you can't shortcut everything right away because there's only so many things you could do in a day, right? So do it a piece at a time and strategically and there's there's shortcuts to doing it, right? It's like, why would I learn how to do, get so deep into doing Kajabi or do it half-assed, pardon my French, if I can find a Gail star or somebody else <laughs> to do it for me, right? Where it's like, mm -hmm. I know what I want. You're going to ask me questions that I probably wouldn't have thought to ask or fill in, right? So- it's, it's a guide and to kind of help me skip some speed bumps on that particular thing. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I do say that it is a consistency thing um, and it takes time. Collaborations are a fantastic way to do it um, because that's a fantastic organic way. And also as a connector type, I think the collaborations are fantastic as well because I believe networking should be about getting to know other people. I gain tremendous amount of insight from meeting other people, whether they're in business for themselves, or even if they have a job, just understanding like, what's the corporate dynamic there? Or what's this? I've liked ideas that people have done in their business and gone, man, I could probably take this. And like, even though we're completely different industries, how could I apply something like that into my business to make things run smoother, more effectively, bring in more sales or that's a piece of information I could share with somebody that I'll give. And I'll be like, oh my goodness, I spoke to this person the other day and they were doing this, right? So I think there's this invaluable piece of also making us not feel alone, right? So the collaborations Absolutely. is definitely mm -hmm. a fantastic thing. Do you ever do, or do your clients do paid ads or ads outside of social media um, for their lead gens? Do you experience so, a lot of that with your clients? So a lot, a lot of clients who are a little bit further down. So I will always, when clients come to me and they're new and they say, oh, so now I want to start doing my ads, I will always try and say to them, you know what, we should actually try and launch initially organically just because I find that when people are creating their programs, they actually don't know just how much work it takes to run a program, you know, initially. And they think that they want to get like 100 people into their program off the bat. And 
it often it often causes a lot of issues then it's just absolute chaos so i always try and recommend for people to initially first second maybe even third launch to try and do it organically so that you're actually not dealing with the huge amount of numbers in your courses but once you've got a product that you know is selling an offer that is dialed in you know the messaging people are giving you great feedback on the transformation you know your program is doing what you say it's going to do then to scale with paid ads is is the way to go you know if you want to carry on growing and growing i know some of my clients prefer to keep their program small and so while their programs are running they're busy building and doing other launches so they they have a, often have a stream of clients coming in but for those that are doing the slightly more hands off programs um they definitely scale with with paid ads so paid ads is a big thing in the in the create in the creator economy and often so like meg will often have a really good paid for um strategy with her launch process so if she's doing a challenge or she's doing a three-day launch training she'll put a lot of focus onto the facebook ads for the launch because you know look Online business is really a numbers game. So you can pretty much predict based on the number of people who register for your pre-launch or for your launch, you can pretty much predict how many people are going to come into your program. So she always does a good push for the registrations so that you've got a good group to start off with. And then people fall off, you know, as the challenge goes or as life happens. So yeah, paid advertising once you've got a, a good offer that's dialed in is definitely a great way to scale. Yeah, I think uh, statistically they say until your um until your lead uh, generator is converting at thirty percent or more, you should not be jumping into the paid ads. Into the paid ads. <clears throat> yeah, Absolutely. right. Because that before that time, you're still kind of in that validating your offer, validating mm. your course process. Um, Absolutely. And because it takes time, like, you know, I have templates on, um, you know, kind of top of funnel headline things, but you still need to tweak it. Right. And so I love when you can do like the comparison kind of um, post things where you can have like an A and B, or you can be talking about mm -hmm. the same thing using like the same video, the same graphic, but your headline's different and keep tweaking different. it and see what's resonating. And from just because it's working so this month and it brings you in like, I don't know, a thousand people into your email list, right? Just pick a number. Doesn't mean that that's going to be what's there next time. Because the other thing that happens is when people start seeing you have success with something like, oh my goodness, I'm going to try that, right? Because nobody's really reinventing the wheel here. I mean, you know, we're being innovative about how we're basically, you know, doing sales and doing all those things. We're innovating in that way. But when somebody sees something working, so then next thing you know, everybody's using that same language and a very similar tagline to yours. So you're going to have to Absolutely. switch it up a bit because then we turn into that white noise thing, right? Yeah, so, 100%. Yeah. Hundred percent. And you know, we we are busy up against that, not so much the white noise, but we are busy up against that um slow growth in South Africa at the moment. We are growing like snails because we have to make sure that our messaging and stuff, and we we have to we're having to test every single thing, and it takes weeks at a time. So we've actually said that we've got to give it a full year of testing and seeing what works and seeing what lands and going to try this and this before we will actually know whether there's a market for us here in South Africa. So people mustn't get despondent if they don't see like progress quickly. As you said, everybody gets told, start an online business and in 30 days you can sell your first course. And I'm just like, yo. I get so mad when I hear people saying that because unless you've already got a really warm audience, you may then sell it in 30 days. But if you're starting from scratch, it's going to take you 330 days. And I think it depends, like you said, the market as well, right? So like you said, in South Africa, for instance, where they're really technology 
wary mm. because it's not a it's not as ever present in their day to day lives yeah. as it is elsewhere in the world, right? So, um, there's a lot more convincing, right? They're they're suspicious, and to be honest with you, I mean, <laughs> we really should be, but when you <laughs> when it's been part of your everyday life for so long, you just kind of become complacent yeah. about it. And it's part of the everyday, but of course they're a little more discerning still, which is good in, in a way for the population, but it also poses its challenges mm, for sure. Absolutely. If that's the market you're tapping into. Um, so in that case, it's going to take a lot longer to try to get the people to convert that way. Whereas in other markets, um, I'm, you know, in the UK say, mm. or in North America, where it's part of everyday life. I mean, I know for myself, I'd always done some shopping online, but once COVID happened, I pretty much mostly did all of my shopping online and I still mostly do, right? I mean, I yeah. do way more of it than I than I used to. And so that's become normal. But for you, for instance, three years ago, you'd never bought a thing online, which to me and probably a lot of people <laughs> listening to this is like, what, are you kidding me? Like, that's the first time you bought something and you're not like a 120 year old, you know, man living under a rock somewhere, you know, you're a woman in her prime, like living full life. And that's the first time you hit it. So I always say, how do you turn them into the warm? And then that's why I was asking you about where people do it, because I know, for instance, um, you know, at least in these parts where people are going when they're ready to buy is they're going to Google. Like, even for me, I, I think I've told you this before, like, I love Tony Robbins and all the things he does. And mm. there's, there's other people I like, but, um, if he's putting something out there, um, just cause I might get the ad in Facebook or wherever it is that I am, I'm still going to leave Facebook and I'm still going to go to Google and, go and, and have a look. Yeah. Cause that's really, those, those are the places, right. Um, and YouTube, Google, YouTube, right. Like that's where people go when they're looking for answers, when they're ready to take action. So I find that that's an easier place to convert um, into actual sales and get warmer leads mm. because that's where those people are at at that time when they're ready to do I that. Um, so in those processes, again, depending on where you are in the world, it can happen um, definitely faster. I mean, I, I personally have seen people get their first clients into courses within 30 days. Absolutely. Yeah. Even from and, a cold and- audience. From a cold audience, yeah, I th- and and as you say, I think because for you guys, it's kind of um a- a- and even me now, having been in this in like business for three years, I am more inclined now to buy something as a as a um, a one sort of purchase. You know, just like I'll see it now, and I'll be like, oh, you know what? I actually wanted to learn about that, so let me buy it. Whereas three years ago, I would never have. And if I tell people about it here, they're just like, what? You did what? Like, why would you do that? People people are teaching you stuff, but you're not going to like a college or it's not like formal online learning. And I'm like, guys, you just don't understand. You can learn how to do a handstand online. And that lady who teaches handstands makes six figures a year. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah so so I agree with you I think being in the being in the room being in the industry you you become far more acclimatized to it so yes um you 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 can here in SA I have to I have to tell a funny story we actually because it was going so slowly we decided to put some Facebook ads out and it was a very simple advert basically saying you know guys you can take something that you already know, a skill you already have, and you can teach it to somebody online. It was a very easy advert. It didn't make any claims about earning this and that. And, you know, we were we were reported by about four people for scam. That was a scam advert. So they closed our Facebook ads account down for a day, and they were like, you the you know your your ad's been reported as spam um as scamming and then we put it in for a review and then they came back and they're like oh, yeah it's not it's not scamming so they opened it up again but that's that's what people thought they were like 
you can't sell your skills online. What are you talking about? Right. So that's a, that's a lie. Like, that's impossible. What what craziness <laughs> is this person talking about? <laughs> yeah. So we've had to become very innovative in our ways of trying to reach people. So that actually kind of, that's a, that's a great segue into what I wanted to ask you about next, because I think it's just very remarkable, you know, never bought anything online. And now this is what you're doing as a business, but um, you're doing like a collaboration to bring this online kind of way of doing business um, to be, to show the possibilities of it and to try to grow it so that the people of South Africa see it as an option, right? So can you talk a bit about that? Cause I, I love this, this piece as well. I think it's, it's fantastic that you're doing that. Sure. So we have, and I actually think I was checking the other day, I think we have the highest unemployment unemployment rate in the whole world. I think at the moment it's sitting at something like 39.7%, which is huge. And um, we have no, no real type of social support. Um, you do get what we call government grants, but the money that you get once a month would probably buy you um two liters of milk a couple of loaves of bread and some veggies like that it's it's crazy people are living it terribly so when this all happened for me and i realized that the opportunities for us in third world countries is so incredible because our rand is so weak against the dollar that one dollar is 18 rand. So I basically working with my online clients from the US or the UK, and the UK is actually 22 um, rands per pound. So it's even weaker. And um, I suddenly increased my earning power by 18 times. And I just thought, you know, we have to let people know that not only could you start an online business with something you already know or something you're already passionate about. You don't have to go and spend money on any more degrees or diplomas or any more training. So you could actually start creating an income for your family, but you you can reach a global audience. So yes, you can decide to stay with in South Africa, but you could reach a, a global audience. And there are a few South Africans who have got this right. So there's definitely, I mean, you, you would probably laugh. There's probably five South Africans who are doing it in a big way at the moment. So, well, then I think they've all contacted me because like I said to you, a lot of my <laughs> audience is in the U S um, but I actually get more, I actually connect more frequently with South Africans than I even do Canadians. So just, I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> yeah, but that gives me hope because it means that we haven't reached people as we should be yet. So, so yes, yeah, so that was our idea. Candace, my business partner, we met when we both took the James Wedmore Business by Design program. We both had separate um, parts. I actually helped her. She was one of the South Africans I helped. She launched a cooking membership, which didn't do particularly well. I helped her with that. And then I ended up doing Meg's Heart Centered Apprentice program. And then Candice was like, Gail, what are you doing? What is this HCA? And so I introduced her to it. And so she ended up doing it. But she specializes in social media. So her company is called Your Social Funnel, and she specializes in taking people off Instagram and bringing them onto your email list. And um, I said to Candice at the beginning of last year, listen, Candice, we need to bring this to South Africa. We've got a guy called Warwick Kearns who's doing it in the e-commerce space, and there's nobody that we know doing it in a big way in the creative economy. So that was our motivation. And we started talking to people. And, you know, the more we talk to people, the more people understand. But until we actually get to talk to them, they can't believe what you're telling them. They've never thought, like they've never seen it. So they they don't even understand the possibilities. 
So as I said, our Facebook ads were shut down. So we're going to do different things. We've got a, we've got people who've got big email lists. So we're going to do some mail shots with them. Go back to the old fashioned way. We've been doing some free coffee chats. So we're not charging any, anybody. It's also good for our research, bringing people in and ho hosting coffee chats and finding out what people are thinking. So it's a slow process, but um, we've said we're giving it a good year. And we will see at the end of the year what happens. And actually, my in my Kajabi business, I've kind of realized that my niche is helping people like me who are coming in fairly new. So whether they are, a lot of my US clients are also very new. So I almost am going to create like a, a kindergarten type course for very new online people. And we can use it for South Africans. We'll just turn it South African flavor because we we deal with a few more challenges here just in terms of payment gateways and things like that that we have to try and work around but we're going to do it as a two-pronged sort of approach so I'll be offering it to my Kajabi clients and we'll be building it out with the South Africans at the same time and I think that that will then it will be one set of work and I'll be able to concentrate on both because it was getting, now that my Kajabi side is taking off, I was finding it a little difficult to spend the time, but now we've got a clear plan. And so, yeah, we're going to, we're going to do it. And I just feel like if we can get 20 households with an income again, uh, it will just, you know, it will make a difference. We'll make a difference one family and one mom at a time. Yeah, I, I love that. I appreciate that. It's very inspirational. Um, you know, I was talking to somebody um, the other day, actually, he's going to be a guest coming up soon. And, you know, he really kind of put into words. And I think that it's a sentiment that both you and I uh, probably relate to. But the way he said it, I found was like, yeah, that's so spot on. And he said he loves you know, what he, you know, when, when he looks at his work and what he does, right. And why he does it, he says he loves putting more food on other people's plates. Right. And I was like, 100%. yeah, that's a hundred percent. Right. Like it makes so much sense. Um, so, and he'll be on and I'll make him say it too. But I was like, <laughs> yes, like, cause I'm always like, I really just want to see people succeed and do this stuff. But in your case, especially where you are in South Africa, it's, it's actually, like not even more food on people's plates. It's actually getting food on their plates, right? It's even more, um, you know, basic necessities, yeah. you know, beyond really kind of the way that, you know, him and I might be going at it from the, from the place that we are, or even dealing with your clients in the U S. So I think that that's a fantastic passion project. Um, and because you're super credible to do it because not that you were starving necessarily, but you knew nothing about technology, and uh, you were making me laugh and think about this time, not related at all, but um, I was just thinking like, they probably think of it like when you, why they shut you down was like, what's this like mumbo jumbo voodoo <laughs> stuff, right? And so for my third child, I decided to have a midwife as opposed okay. to a doctor. And my husband was like, what? And he was like, <laughs> so when I booked the first appointment, he, he would say like, fine, let's go see your voodoo doctors, right? But it was, it was just because he didn't know anything about it. Right. And so Absolutely. that's the thing. He just didn't know, right. He was unaware. He didn't know what it was about. He wasn't really sure why I was making the choice until he got there and kind of saw what that thing and, was. And so yeah. it's opening your eyes to it. So it's just funny when people don't know, they think it's this far off thing. Um, you know, I yeah. always say we're living in the Star Trek times, you know, <laughs> um, if you ever saw Star Trek, right. Like the, when it first came out in the seventies, the, 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 whatchamacallit thing, you know, like beam me up, Scotty. Yeah. That's the first flip yeah. phone, phone, man. That was the and, first flip phone. And, and the unknown galaxies, like as the spaceship is like heading into them, you're absolutely right. And people are like, what are you talking about? But then <laughs> when you explain to them and you just see their eyes light up and you see their brains and the, they, they just see the possibilities of it. And then they understand what you're talking about. So, and yeah. I think that's it's one of the most important things too, that you also giving is really just this um, it's a hope, right. Where they might mm -hmm. otherwise feel hopeless, 
right? Absolutely. Or helpless and it's empowering to them. So if they get an opportunity to learn about it and, and you're there to help them with the steps, you know, now they feel empowered. And I think that that leads to so many other things, right? The minute you feel empowered in a place, and especially if you've had to step out of your comfort zone to do it, that just leads to so many more possibilities. Like we were kind of saying at the beginning, right? It's like, you just don't know where it's going to take you. So I think that that's, that's, you know, beyond the fact that they'll be able to make money, right? Be not dependent on what's going on there in the market necessarily. They can be tackling more of an international market per se, or maybe just a different way to do business locally and get get more out within their region because they're going to the online. It's really about hope. It's about in, in people feeling empowered, which is not comparable at all to the markets that we deal in. But that's that's how I feel about it too. Like I just always feel like what I'm doing is making people see like, okay, you, your post didn't go viral. You know, like I don't want you to mm. feel hopeless or feel like you're not, um, what you have isn't valuable. I want people to feel that empowerment and then show them the steps and then hopefully inspire them to take action. And so, mm. you know, you're doing it in, a, in in this kind of much more humanitarian way and in a place that so desperately needs it. So I really appreciate that. Um, and, and that's inspiring think, for me. I also think that, Kelly, what you're saying is, I think it doesn't actually matter who you're helping, but if you are helping people to see their possibilities, and as you say, you know, don't be despondent because your post didn't go viral and just to inspire them to keep going. It doesn't actually matter where you're doing it. You helping people. So, yeah. yeah. So let's do, um, you know, so whenever I'm doing the show, I'm thinking about who my audience is in general and, um, you know, yours as well. We, we typically probably deal with, with people in general, um, who've been in business a bit longer, but there's also this segment that we tackle where it's people just starting out. And actually in a way that's kind of the, what the more ideal time to reach them is when they're just starting out. So they don't spend all this time. Like I wish some people mm. would show up to like somebody like you or me what, before they tried all the other things and start to feel discouraged. Right. Because some people actually quit and walk away and that's actually really heartbreaking. So let's talk about it from the two, two different perspectives. Um, you talked a bit on how you ran your first one, right? So if we can leave the audience with actionable steps, so we can, if we do it from the place of zero budget, or just, you want to try it on your own, cause you think you're techie enough. What are the first actionable steps they can do to kind of build this kind of lead generator, start building their, their email list so they can nurture it. And then what would be a more higher level where either if they think that they're skilled enough to do Kajabi or they're ready to engage with somebody like yourself to help them. So we can look at actionable steps from both those points of view, maybe, and mm -hmm. leave our audience with that. Sure. So my, my first thing that I always sort of <clears throat> say to my clients coming in is when they're first starting out is we always joke about when is the best time to start your audience building? And we always say that it was like six months ago or a year ago. So, but if neither of those happened, then to start now. So what I would always say is look around you. So if you've got zero budget and you're wanting to start building an audience, look around you because you probably already have an audience of some sort that you, you may not think is an audience. So you may already be doing some speaking, in-person speaking events or some networking events. You may already have people that you've been emailing, you know, in your in your business or maybe it's an offline business. So look around first and see if you do already have any kind of audience that you can build on. The next thing is that there are so many free tools that you can use. So things like, as I said, right in the beginning, my very first thing that I committed to doing was going into the Kajabi Facebook group and helping wherever I could. If I knew the answers to a question that somebody asked, I would help with no expectation of any anything in return. And I actually set aside time. Uh, I did half an hour when I first got into the office. I'd go into the group and I'd scroll through and I'd see if there were any help wanted posts. And I used to do it when I got home in the evenings because that I found a lot of questions would come through as the my American clients were kind of waking up. 
So I've done that in the official Kajabi group. I've done it I, I'm in a couple of other groups, um, sort of free Kajabi groups that other people run that have given me permission to answer questions. So I've always done that because you know what you were saying, Kelly, about if you meet somebody and you like, like their offer and then you go and you do a little bit of digging and a little bit of stalking and you see them, that's what happens in Facebook groups. If people are connecting with you, then they will often search for you in those groups. I've seen it time and time again. Um, and they'll see if you're helping, if you're answering that kind of thing. So I've always done that. And um, creating, deciding, and I would say you must be quite strategic and deciding on your social media platforms based on where your ideal client hangs out. So not based on what you would like to be, like you love Facebook, but your, in, your, your ideal client hang out on Instagram. So you need to do a bit of research. There's no point in posting everything on Facebook if you're going to be missing them. So choose your social media platform based on where your clients hang out and then just start you know, giving value, you should have a social media strategy if you can, because you want to not only be giving how to's, but you want to be giving points of views, you want to be giving a bit of disruption type of content, you know, how to's are great, but you don't want to be only doing how to's people need to know, remember, your we chatted about the five stages of awareness. So you want to be looking at those in terms of content for all the different buyers as they go through their journey so create just try and and be consistent uh, like I can only manage three posts a week on my Instagram and but I do it consistently if I was to say I'm going to post every day I just know it wouldn't happen and then I would be up and down all over the place so consistency is key and if you are good at podcasting or YouTubing it often lasts longer. People use YouTube as a search engine. People, more and more people are using Instagram and Pinterest as search engines, but people really do use YouTube as search engines. And a lot of, I go to YouTube for a lot of my how-to things. So I've connected with a lot of people there. So choose your, your social medias um, wisely and just start that process. Then, once you're getting all of that going and you've started researching on platforms or, you know, how you want to bring people in, that's when you need to start setting up your, your funnels. So your landing pages, your opt-in forms. And so from there, you know, start bringing people onto your list. So you can do a lot free of charge. Um, you can create your own Facebook groups, you know, as you're talking Bring people into your groups because in that inner group, you can reach them more easily than just on your Facebook pages and stuff like that. So definitely the zero budgets, that's yeah. what I would I would do. And what are, I mean, obviously Kajabi is your favorite platform, but if somebody say doesn't have the budget for say a Kajabi, mm. you you kind of piecemeal together your first bits of it, right? Mm. So what did you what did you use? So initially, I just used my own email system, and I used a Google document, and I mean, not a Google document, sorry, a Google Drive, and I, I uploaded the videos and the PDFs and the workbooks and everything into nice folders in the Google Drive, and that's what I sold to people, and people still use that today, so I've never actually changed that. The people who went into that program still have access to it. And then they knew, because there was only 15 people or so, they had um, access to me via WhatsApp. And it all worked really well. Um, but there's lots of ways. I've, I've had clients who have built everything on Facebook. You do run the risk of, you know, as you say, Facebook suddenly changing things or your account getting hacked. But I've got clients who've built their all their courses even in free Facebook groups. Well, they only get added to the group once they pay, but within the group, they've got all the modules, the people go live in the Facebook groups, so they can do all their lead generation and everything from within Facebook. So there's definitely ways of doing it free. And then you get platforms like Teachable, 
Thinkific. Thinkific, I think, gives you one free course. So you could actually, if you had one course, you could actually do the whole course through Thinkific for free. But there's there's all sorts. There's Searchy, um, Samcart. There's a lot of different platforms that have their own strengths and weaknesses. But a lot of them are, you know, a lot more reasonable. I, I'm following um, a young girl who's doing a, a lot of work, a lot of training on ChatGPT. And she, her whole... Um, course her whole portal everything is on mighty networks i think and i've heard really good things about that so there really is there are there are programs out there uh software platforms out there to pretty much suit every budget but you can do it completely free if you wanted to and then as you grow and you start getting an income then you can move on to to paid platforms yeah, investing into ones that are a little more robust, maybe, Yeah, especially with things like the marketing pieces and all those things. Like I said, I, I didn't even know, and I don't know even, all the capabilities that are within Kajabi. So it's been interesting to kind of delve into that and learn a bit more about it. You know, I just appreciate all of the information that you've shared with me, with us. Um, I love like your story, how you came into it very inspired by the work that you're trying to do there to help bring up, you know, people um, within your communities and and where you are in South Africa. So if people wanted to get a hold of you, or also if you have any offers you have going on right now, do you want to share any of that with us before we kind of sign off on this episode? And we'll make sure to share those links in the uh, show notes as well. That would be awesome. Thank you, Katie. So my website is called threestars.com. And the story behind that is that I have two daughters. One has actually just come into the business. She studied digital marketing. And so she's come in with me. And we're hoping that my little one who's now at university might also. So that's why we went with the, the three stars. Um, and yeah, on my website, you will see all the different ways to work with me. So at the moment, the website is predominantly Kajabi services related. Um, I have individual what I call unstuck me sessions. So it's an hour where we where you can just come with all your questions or any part of the tech that is just frustrating you. Or if you built a funnel and you just need a second set of eyes to make sure it's all linked correctly. So those are those are very popular because sometimes you're doing it on your own and you don't actually need to take on anybody on a big package or whatever. You just need a little bit of help. So those, and then I do the full implementation build. So I can build your website, I can build your funnels, I can build your courses. And if you need some strategy, if you right at the beginning, as you said, <clears throat> so often I think people would save themselves so much money if they just did a couple of strategy, strategy sessions first so that they could get a clear roadmap of what they needed to do. And then, um, so those are on the services side. And then I've just started this year to actually do some Kajabi training. I wanted to make sure that I knew Kajabi properly inside and out before I started offering training in it. So I feel like my three years is being good training for me. So yeah, that's the next step. I'm gonna be offering um, some Kajabi training. And then on the SA side, on the South African side, Candice and I have got a, <clears throat> a big meeting on the 28th of April, and we are going to be putting together our program. We've, we've done a lot of research, spent three months talking to people, so we're going to be heading on to our program. So that's at, at SA Digital Academy. At the moment, we've got a Facebook, uh, we've got an Instagram account and a website. So yeah, that's what we're up to. That's fantastic. I'm excited to see how that unfolds for you. And I'm excited for the people of South Africa who might be able to come across that as well. Um, and so I just wanted to thank you so much for being on the show, for sharing um, your insights, your expertise, um, and your story with us, Gail. Katie, thank you. I've really enjoyed it. It's been great. Hey, thank you for listening to The Shift with myself, Kelly McDipple. I would love it if you could go to your favorite podcast app or the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. Your feedback is always valuable 
and it'll help us reach more people and make an impact. So we'll see you back here next week. And remember, you don't always have to know exactly where you're going, but if you get up and show up every day in whatever way you can, and you do it with an open mind and heart, rooted in your values, mission, and with intention, then you will always find yourself exactly where you're supposed to be. I promise.